With the Paralympics only nine months away, technology that helps our medal hopefuls reach their full potential is being developed right here in the capital. Paul Carter, a double limb amputee, has gone to experience for himself what those benefits can be. Shake that. I'm here at Lee Valley Athletic Centre, where the brightest and best of our Olympic and Paralympic athletes train every single day. For Johnny, one of our country's top Paralympians, training hard is just a way of life. But he's got a secret weapon at his disposal, his blades. So, how long have you been wearing a prosthetic leg? I lost my leg when I was five by a contracted meningitis, a uh, form of blood poisoning. And unfortunately, my right leg got infected at the foot. Um, it started to get really inflamed. The doctors tried to save it, but unfortunately they couldn't. So the only sort of last option was, was amputation. So were you always quite active as a kid? Were you quite sporty? Yeah, definitely. I always used to play football uh, at school, kiss chase, stuck in the mud, everything else, you know, like you did uh, in primary school. But I didn't really do anything sporty until sort of secondary school when I started playing for the school rugby team. So when did you kind of make that switch from... Um, what you call normal prosthetic legs into sporty and running running type legs and blades that you're wearing now? I didn't actually get a blade until about two years ago. And did it take you long to kind of learn that compensation between both legs? Definitely, yeah. It took me about a good five or six months. I mean, I'm still kind of learning today. Johnny Peacock shoulder to shoulder there with Pistorius and Peacock a little bit slow out of his blocks, but his pickup is good. And After getting his first blade... Johnny managed to go from novice to the World Championships in two years. I wonder what I'll be able to achieve in one week. Can anyone put on a pair of pair of blades and become a runner? You can try it. I mean, why don't you come back to me when you've got some? Legs you can run on are a pretty specialist piece of equipment. They are individually tailored for every athlete and they don't come cheap. Richard Hirons is the man who develops this incredible technology. So this is a good example of a prosthesis that Johnny would wear. We call it the, the cheetah. It's um, an example like Oscar Pistorius. He, he wears a similar product to this. It's the socket, it's the blade, and it's the, the sort of the adapted footwear as well. So this is for track use. A very um, responsive blade here. This carbon fibre spring will give him as much energy return as, as we can. It, it doesn't produce more energy than his, than his normal ankle or his normal leg. And what a prosthesis does it tries to reduce the extra effort that people have to put in. It's still extra work. And there's no spring that's absolutely 100% efficient, and certainly no spring that is more than efficient. So these just reduce the disadvantage that, that somebody has. Paralympic javelin thrower Scott Morehouse, who is an above the knee amputee, has provided Richard with one of his biggest challenges. I first met Richard Hirons and Richard Naveen earlier in the year and it was identified that one of the things that was holding me back in my performance was the, the prosthetic leg. We, we looked at the, the leg and broke it down into three key components, uh, one of which was a knee joint. The most interesting phase to us is what we call the plant and that's where he will dig his prosthetic heel into the ground when all the momentum that he's built up through his, his, his run-up um, he then transfers that momentum into some kind of propulsion to launch the javelin. And so we need to have a knee joint that's both flexible when he runs, but very stable, that when he plants the foot, we know that the leg's not going to jackknife and, and bend and he's going to go down. And the final part was the, was the foot, because it wasn't very fluid when I was doing my crossovers. We came up with putting a carbon fibre heel on the bottom of the flex run feet, so that I could plant with a heel uh, that would lock the knee joint and then the socket you know, would be attached and that would, that would be the best setup. And consequently, I added six and a half meters onto my PB. It's helped me not only with my javelin technique, but in return, I'm sort of helping them develop the next generation of prosthetic legs. Well, here at Proactive Prosthetics, they certainly seem to have done a great job for Scott. So I'm here to see if they've got anything for me. For Paul, we've made him a pair of sockets and these are, have some flexible liners to them and a, a carbon fibre shell, that's, this is a, the structural component. We have at the bottom of his socket a spring that will give just the right amount of bend for him. But these will feel quite lively, I think, and it'll be, it'll be interesting to see, see what he feels. It's gonna be fun. Should we give it a go? Absolutely, need to get those off. Okay, okay so there yeah. we go, you, you pull that on up all the way up. Great. Wow, that's so lovely. I think balance might be an issue. Um, he'll certainly feel a bit wobbly. Um, because we're going to make him longer than he's been used to. And then also trying to exploit the amount of spring that we have in these. So we've taken his body weight and we've chosen a spring that will give just the right amount of bend for him. How about some steps? 
Okay. So this is quite a new experience. There's quite a lot of movement going on here. Okay. Is that that's Good. normal? Absolutely. Right. I don't think I'm quite up to running just yet, but I feel like I'm getting there slowly. That took a little bit more energy than I was expecting, to be honest. I can already feel it in my legs because you're having to move constantly to try and keep keep your balance, which is quite an unusual sensation. It's quite new to me. Once I'd managed to walk on them without falling over, Richard was determined to get me out running, which is a lot harder than it looks. And then you can just start to relax a little bit, use the bounce of the legs, keep the rhythm in Whoa. your head though. That's quite, that's quite hard work. It's good work, good work. Pretty good, how'd it feel? Tiring. Hmm, I think that I'm going to need a bit more help with this. So I've come to get some pointers from one of our most accomplished Paralympians, Steph Reed. Great Britain has a new sprinter on the loose, as Stephanie Reed, a former Canadian, now wears the red, white and blue of Great Britain. Having lost her leg in a boating accident when she was 15, now she not only runs in the 100 and 200 metres, but also competes in the long jump. I've got my new blades, I've been watching you guys run. You make it all look remarkably easy. <laughs> um, I'm struggling to stand still. But I mean, are they easy to, to run on? I, mean, I think people might have the perception that these blades magically make you, you know, a great runner, but the reality is if you weren't a good runner to start off with, you're going to be an even worse runner when we get you on blades. What's it like having, having just one? Because I presume that's quite a different sensation you have on each side, so you must have to yes. compensate for that when you, when you run, do you? You know, I've got one regular, one regular leg and I've got one artificial leg. Now, when I'm running and pounding, I've got two completely different forces going through both sides of my body. They each hit the ground with a different frequency, a different impulse. And so um, every step that I take, I'm losing efficiency and I'm constantly fighting to stay centered and stay squared. And so I've done extensive work just forcing like this hip, these glutes, these things to work and actually take the bulk of the load. Even now, I've, it's probably still when I run you know, 60, 40, and we're striving to, you know, if I want to get faster, I'm going to have to even that up. And so that, that's where a lot of the work is focused on. Have you got any advice on how to make it easier? I think um, for me, you know, I spent that first year doing the tedious work, doing the core work, doing the hip work, making sure I was running correctly. And if you don't have a strong core, strong hips, it is going to wreak absolute havoc on your body. So it's off to the gym. Over the past week, I've done nothing but eat, sleep and drink running. For someone that hates running and likes sleeping and drinking, that's a pretty big deal. Now I'm as fit as I'm going to get, I think I'm ready to see what it's like to train with the professionals. Much better. You feeling that? Just make sure that when you're running, it's like that. So both arms are coming back because you can use them a bit more than you do. Yeah, OK. <laughs> There's talk that in the future these might get so fast and so quick that people actually might have legs amputated and have these things instead to become quicker runners. I mean, do you yeah. can, can you see that kind of thing happening? Um, in all honesty, I think you can see blades getting quicker and making people faster, but no one's going to get their leg taken off because, I mean, you know, going around in day-to-day -day life, it's not as easy as everything else. I mean, going and having a shower, things like that, even the most simple tasks can be magnified and made, made more difficult. Right, well, I think I've, I think I've had enough. You, yeah. you put me through my paces. I don't think I'm cut out for this. <laughs> I'll let you get back to, to Dan and get on with your training, and I'll leave it to the pros. Cheers, thanks a lot. Well, I think that even with all the training in the world, I don't think I'm ever going to be quick enough or even fit enough to compete with these guys. While these are incredible pieces of technology, it's only through hard work and determination that you actually turn that incredible technology into gold medals on the track when it really matters.